So you're shopping for car insurance and you're wondering like, what is all these questions and why are they asking these? Let's dive in and go through and explain why each question is being asked and how relevant it is to your scenario. Now each state does ask some different questions. Some states have outlawed different rules. So you can't, marital status can't be counted in most states. Credit technically isn't counted in a lot of states. So there's a lot of questions that may or may not pertain to you in your state, but most of them are gonna be common. I just went to thinkinsuranceguide.com and clicked the best quote. That's my website. That's, these are questions that I don't really ask specifically. These are questions that companies wanna know. So when we're shopping the insurance for you, then we're gonna go through and type all of these answers into a rating software that's gonna give us some companies and give us an idea of a direction that we need to go which company has the best coverages, along with which ones have the best price. So let's dive in and go over some of the questions that they're gonna start with. Number one is what type of policy do you want? Home, auto, umbrella, life insurance, boat insurance, all of those things. You're just gonna click the buttons and it's gonna ask you some additional questions. The second piece is they're gonna ask you what type of vehicles do you have? We'll go through the car insurance first and just kind of focus on that one. I will make another video for home insurance if you are interested in doing the home insurance for a new home or current home purchasers. So auto, I'm gonna put in, I have a 2017 Honda Fit. Typically they wanna know how many vehicles you have. So if they're registered to you, most companies don't want to insure just the one vehicle. Technically, legally, there are most states will let you have separate policies as long as the coverages are equal as far as the liability limits, but it costs you more. So you might as well combine them together anyways. On top of it, they want to, some companies do have an all or none rule and that's just, it is what it is. What limits of coverages you want, that's what ours says. I just put minimum standard and excellent because that's more of a conversational piece. There's so many coverages. If I told you every little coverage and had you fill that out, you wouldn't even go through the quote. I'm trying to make this quote as quick as in a minute as possible. How many drivers are in the household? How many people live in the home is actually a better question. So we wanna know that how many people are going to be listed on the policy one, but what other risks are in the home? Companies care about the number of drivers. They usually wanna know, is there five people in the house? Do we need to exclude two of them? Or do we need to list two of them? Because they do have direct access to your vehicle. But Mark, why does that matter? Well, it matters because insurance companies have had a ton of claims where the person that lived in the household wasn't listed on the policy. And then you just kind of pretend it's permissible use, which says, oh, I let him borrow the car. He doesn't normally drive. Well, then they need to be listed on your policy. If somebody's driving your vehicle more than twice a year, nine times out of 10, that's considered outside of permissible use. Date of birth matters. Your age plays a huge factor. If you're under the age of 25, you're considered a higher risk. If you're between 25 and 50, you're kind of a medium risk. They love anywhere from a 40 year old to about a 60 year old. That's usually the best type of client that insurance companies are looking for. It's just whatever age you're at, you can't change that. It is what it is. If you lie on it, you can't because it's going to run your license. It's going to pull the data and it's going to verify it if you go to purchase the insurance. So the age matters a lot. They're going to ask the date of birth. And then are you married? doesn't necessarily make a difference. The only reason they ask this is more of a convenience for you. If you want to list your spouse or exclude them, you have the choice, but usually you need to list if you're married, not for a pricing standpoint. It's just kind of asking a preference. Do you want to be listed as married? The other part is when you're on a policy, there's two slots for a policy. There's the named insured or primary named insured slot, and then there's additional drivers. The additional drivers can be listed on the policy. That way they get pulled over, they know they're covered, things like that, but they can't change anything on the policy. They're not allowed to call your agent and say, I need to do X, Y, and Z because they're not the primary named insured. Spouses are primary named insureds. So when you add a spouse, it doesn't necessarily change the price. It can actually sometimes even make the price cheaper, especially if they have a good driving record and decent credit, insurance score as they call it, then that's a benefit. If they don't have a good driving record, you can exclude them nine times out of 10, but list them on there. So if you get in an accident and you can't call on the insurance, they have access to do so for you. Now, because there's been a whole lot of uh, changes with the way that marriages can be, they actually allow domestic partner. So you can put as other if you're not legally married, but you do want that person as the secondary named insured. That's the primary named insured as well. The secondary has access to make edits on the policy. And then after that, there's not more than two slots that you can even put in there. 
you can authorize someone to call on your behalf and they can make notes on that. But in general, you're gonna list them as a primary name insured. If you're just doing an auto quote, it's gonna say, hey, you're missing a discount. You didn't ask for renters or home insurance. It's not necessarily required by any means, but if you do have a home and the company can get a competitive rate on the home, then bundling those two can knock off anywhere from 20 to 40% off your entire insurance policy. So combining can make a difference with the way the rates are right now, it might make sense to break them apart, but if you have an independent agent like we use, then you have that option where they can check both options. Let's check it together, let's check it separate. Does it make sense to do just one or put them as a combo? If you are looking for car insurance, this is basically the website you would go to thinkinsurance.com forward slash best quote. I'll put a link in the description below if you're looking for a new agent. Otherwise, the next part is what is your current insurance? Your current insurance plays a massive factor in almost every state. I don't think California counts insurance against you, so that's the one state where it doesn't really matter. Michigan, Tennessee, Virginia, Ohio, all of these main states that you're going to look at, they all care about your prior insurance. If you have not had a vehicle that's a little bit different, it's called no prior, no need, then you don't necessarily have to carry that insurance because you don't have a car, what's the point? You're not gonna get dinged as versus someone that has had insurance, they had a lapse or a cancel, they didn't pay the bill, something happened, life just moved on and they haven't had insurance for X amount of time, a day, five days, a year, whatever the case is, then it's gonna cost more initially to start that policy back up because that risk is there. That means you have a vehicle, it's registered, it wasn't insured, you're legally supposed to do that, but you're choosing not to. It just changes the risk on level of risk of type of insurance company. Knowing the company doesn't exactly matter. You can put any company. It defaults to other because a lot of people don't care. But knowing the company helps the agent understand, okay, the reports aren't pulling or this is happening. If they've been doing this insurance game for a while, they'll understand quickly how can they better see you because most people who are in certain companies, you can tell what type of coverages they've got. And that helps you kind of understand what are we comparing to? Yeah, it helps me as the agent a little bit more to uh, essentially build you the right policy. But Mark, that doesn't make sense. You could just ask the questions. True, <laughs> There's, I don't have a rebuttal for that. That's honestly the truth. It's, we should be asking the questions, but if we can save you time and just get you off the phone so we can type it up fast and then get you the numbers you want, then verify the coverage and say, hey, is this what you were looking for? Honestly, I'm 95%, 99% accurate with the coverages. You, if you've done it for 10, 12 plus years, you, you get it. Like there's, the world hasn't changed in the insurance world as much as people think. The prices are going crazy. The companies are all changing things and little things here and there. Some stuff that matters to clients, but in general, when someone's shopping, you can kind of get an idea of what coverage they're looking for, whether it's price focused or coverage focused. And then discounts, those are huge. Like there might be more than this, but this is the starting point. Do you have a good student discount? Are you 50 or older? Are you a homeowner? That's not always a discount, by the way. Most states don't count that. Uh, pay, are you going to pay in full? Some companies give hundreds off if you pay in full. Is there a college degree? Also, technically not a discount. Uh, it's more so if you're buying a different type of policy called an umbrella, they kind of need to know the occupation, stuff like that. Um, are you an early shopper? Are you gonna start the policy two weeks from now? That can be beneficial. Are you a credit union member? Some of these are called affiliate discounts. GM might have a discount with company B or so-and-so might have a discount with company A. It's when there's larger groups of companies that say, we wanna work with your insurance companies, we want a bigger discount. So those can help. Credit union members, usually the most common. And then you can be a Harley Davidson member. If you have an association degree, uh, the biggest ones are CPAs and engineering degrees. If you have those and you're part of the associations, then you're gonna get some discounts that can be super beneficial, especially when you're shopping. I leave a spot for you to put anything else. If you know insurance a little bit and you know you get discounts for X, Y, and Z, then you can put that in the description in here. We need to know the address. Yes, they technically only need to know the zip code, but I can't just plug in a zip code. So if we're gonna shop, we have to know the location. Even if I put one, two, three, four, five, it's going to screw up the software because the main thing that the software is trying to do is pull data. Your insurance history is tied to that data. I've never seen anyone get around this. So 
a lot of people try to say, oh, I live at this address, and then it flags more things. Now you gotta jump through more hoops, because once they find out or realize that you're trying to skew the information, and they're gonna catch that, because your license is registered to a certain zip code, certain address. If not, sometimes you have to prove that you're not at that address. If you recently moved, some companies want to show proof that you live there, so we need a water bill, electric bill. Not super common, but it can happen. The address is the key piece that pulls your data from your old insurance company. So instead of me asking you what's the year, make a model of your car, I can just look at your old insurance and there's your VIN, boom. Oh, what coverages did you have? I can't see all of your policy, but I can see your liability limits. Oh, you currently carry the 250,000, 500,000. I've had times where I've lost customers because I'm like, dude, your, your coverage is way better than what we're talking about. Like I can do it, but it's like you're leaving a company and don't get me wrong. I don't want to lose the business, but I don't want to screw someone over either. So like having that data that pulls the VINs, pulls the drivers, your licenses can be attached to that for our purposes and we can access most of that. So the address is a very important piece that helps us to move forward with the quote. If you recently moved in the last, I think two years, they're going to ask you for both addresses, the new one and then your old one, because a lot of times insurances don't report that often. So you may have some old data that's sitting in there. The other thing is if you're an agent watching this video, be a little bit careful because if you are looking at the data, again, that can be old data and it's not always 100% accurate. It gives you an idea of what coverages that you're looking at for their previous company. I'd say 80% of the time it's accurate, but sometimes I see the property damage at like 50,000 when it was 500,000. So a lot of times there's a zero missing and things like that, that customers may or may not have coverage wise, but in general, it gives you a really good idea of the coverage of a previous company if they report which most companies do report. Phone number and email, depending on the company you work with, very important. We wanna communicate with you. For us, we text you. We're gonna say, hey, this is so-and-so, I'm working on your quote. Can I text here if I have other questions? And that way we're not having to call you constantly. Now, if you're going online and doing a quote with multiple places that you've never heard of and you don't necessarily know if you can trust them, I would probably make some information up the email Unfortunately, they won't email you the quote unless they have the right email. So sometimes you have to put in the right email. So if you have like a backup email, that's an option. But for us, like when you're filling out a quote with us, we don't email you. Not well, there might be a small automation that sends an email out that says, hey, this is your agent. They're going to be working on the quote for you. And it depends on the company because you can get bombarded with just annoying information from a lot of companies. And those are just the agency's policies that they're trying to get a hold of you. They're trying to fight all those other companies for business. We're more of a, if you want to come to us, let's have a conversation. If we can help you, great. If we can't, we understand we're not going to bombard you with information. Lastly is consent. That's a legal thing. Um, I've got to update it because at the end of this year, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I actually work with independent agents. So I usually, if I'm not licensed in your state and my company isn't licensed in your state, then I've found a lot of independent agents that you can work with that are just as good as what we do, where they work with a ton of companies. Some states, there's a couple all state main agencies. I think there might be a state farm in there, but I legally have to tell you in the future, starting in 2025, I think, those specific companies. So I've got to figure that part out. And it just allows us to know that you're going to get a text message from us. We may do a phone call to you. We're going to supposedly market. And I just put in every company that I work with. So it's like any affiliate that we're part of. I'm not affiliate with anyone right now. So it's like, you're probably not going to get anything. Keep in mind, those are the main questions that you're going to find and people are going to ask. The other part that they're not asking in here is what you use the vehicle for. So we typically default to commuting five days a week, 10 miles each way, about 10 to 12,000 miles a year. That's our default, so to speak. But your agent should be verifying that when they call you or when they text you or go to talk to you about the policy. There's a few things that a lot of these places don't ask. And don't be shocked if you go online and they start asking that. So vehicle one, what is it mainly used for? Pleasure, uh, business, is it for commuting to work and back or school and back? 
how many days a week, how many miles each way. So small things like that, you're going to notice that a lot of quote companies are going to ask you for, and it's just so they can rate the vehicle properly. If you're using it for business, they've got to determine, is it a commercial policy or is it a typical, I'm just a construction worker, I drive to different locations, and we can rate it for that. Is it farm use only, where it just sits on a farm? That's super cheap, right? You're not driving on the road nine times out of 10. There's different scenarios that are going to pop up. Those are the main ones that you're going to see going through an auto quote. Hopefully this was helpful. If you are shopping for car insurance, like I said, links in the description below. But if you're unfamiliar with the coverages that you need to carry, that's super important when you are shopping. I'll put our car insurance 101 video here that will go a lot more in depth. If you've already kind of shopped around and you're starting to look at some different options, the discount video may be beneficial. That might help you get that extra edge as far as getting the price down a little bit. I'm Mark with Think Insurance. I'll see you in the next one.